And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. The very first Flash Friday of 2008. Headlights are on all across Likas land. That's right. Everybody's got their headlights on. The Tom Likas listeners look around. You see the people with the headlights on on this Friday? Likas listeners just like you so right now is the time to turn your headlights on especially if you've just left work and you're getting onto the freeway be sure to put your headlights on right now and ladies if you see somebody with the headlights on your job as our loyal listener as one of our cool chick listeners is to show them your rack that's right show them your cans we flash you you flash us it's that simple If you see a nice pair of cans, or if you've seen a nice pair today, call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Ladies, if you are planning on planting yourself somewhere, or you're on a highway and you'd like to flash somebody, but you haven't seen a headlight for whatever reason, you can call us as well at 1-800-5800-TOM, 1-800-5800-866. And we will be more than happy to uh, find uh, one of our revelers out on the freeways here. It's that simple. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game. As long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. All you need to do is call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. And might I say that if you're listening to us on the internet from some country that doesn't carry the Tom Likas show, no taste there. That's why it's great to live in America. Uh, Here's what you do. Uh, Call our international number. In fact, we do have an opening on the international line right now. If you call this number, country code is 1. The area code is 323. And the telephone number is 520-6211. I'll give you that whole package again. 1-323-520-6211. Let's go to your calls here at 1-800-5800-TOM. Let's say hi here to Ian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Uh, Ian, I uh, I wanted to know uh, a couple questions from you. Uh, what, do you what, what, do you, uh, what do you think about Howard Stern and uh, his marriage that's coming up this year? Well, I'm not in favor of anybody getting married. Uh, as you know, any guy, Howard Stern or anybody, uh, because I think... Uh, Howard Stern already, uh, according to reports, got burned in one divorce. It's amazing how short a memory uh, span guys have sometimes. And yeah, he... Oh. No, go ahead. Oh, no, because uh, I've been listening to Howard Stern for a long time, and he always said, after his first divorce, after he got screwed the first time, he said, I'm never going to get married again, and now look what he's doing seven right. years later. Probably uh, not a good idea for Howard. Um, I wish Howard only the best, uh, uh, Beth is uh, certainly one of the hottest women on the planet, and uh, you just hope good things get to happen to Howard. And I hope he's right and I'm wrong, but you know how I feel about that. Yeah, hey, I, I had another question for you. Um, I heard your name mentioned on mentioned on another serious show called uh, Bubba the Love Sponge, and I wanted to know what your opinions on him was. Bubba's always been uh, very nice to us, and uh, I've never had a bad word to say about him. Yeah, I, uh, I've been listening to Sirius for about a year now, and I've uh, been listening to you for about three months. How did you find out about us from Bubba the Love Sponge? 
Yeah, I actually, I, wow. I listen to the Bubble Love Sponge, and uh, I found out about you through them, and I also live in Los Angeles, and I realized that you're broadcasted here on 97.1, so... Yeah, uh, no, I, I think Bubba's been uh, just a great guy to us. And if Howard thinks that strongly of Bubba to put him on the air uh, on his own channel, you know, I'm all in favor. Yeah, I've been trying to call Howard to ask his opinions on you, uh, but I never seem to get through to his show. Well, uh, you know, Howard is uh, still, the, you know, the great icon of the last quarter century in the radio business. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, his show has definitely gotten a little more... Uh it seems a little more staged now that it's on serious. I don't know if that is the right word, but it just seems a little like, I don't know, it seems like more acting now to me. I don't know why. No idea, Ian. I don't listen to as much radio as I used to. I certainly don't listen to music radio um, anymore. Um, I've stopped. Um, I get my music from other places now. Um, as far as satellite radio, I have Sirius. I have XM. But... Um, you know, I only have so many hours in a day, and uh, frankly, I got my own show to worry about. But, uh, I, you know, I think the world of Howard Stern. All right, well, thank, thanks, Tom. Can you take me out with a bong hit? I certainly can. <coughs> Flash Friday, wide open telephones, 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Kathy. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Kathy. How are you? Great. So, I'm calling because I have a question. Yes. First of all, I, want to make, I just want to say I completely agree with you about Barack Obama and everything you were saying a couple of days ago. I'm his a supporter, too, and I hope he wins. So, And I hope you don't take the stance that, you know, you said something about you don't care one way or the other. You're going to just vote for him. You've got a really strong listenership and you could do a lot to help him get elected that is actually i never said any such thing i said the exact opposite i said that uh i'm not trying to convince anybody who to vote for right. and i really don't care who people vote for i only know who i'm going to vote for so you have completely misquoted me and misunderstood anything that i've said about this no that's what i just said i said you you that's what you just said is what i said it didn't sound like it. It sounded like the opposite of what I said. It sounded well, like you said that I've got a very large listenership and I'm going to do anything I can to help Barack well, Obama get elected. No, I said you could. I hope. You I thought you were saying stand. I said that. Oh, you, no, you're no, hoping hope you, you want me to. You want me to do to, to do something like that? Yes, yes. That's what I'm suggesting. Why do you want me to do that? Because you have such a big listenership, and you could. And now, I, I have a big listenership because I don't talk about politics. Well, but you don't have to do it all the time. But, I mean, here and there, over the next few months... It's not my job. It could be. It's, it's not... No, no. It's, that's unfair to the loyal listeners to this show who don't tune in for input on who to vote for. They tune in to laugh. True. Well, let me... let me. Can I change the subject for a minute? I called in for a particular reason. I've been listening to you over the last year, and I hear from time and again that you say to men, don't date a woman if she doesn't... Give it up after three dates. You know, just forget it. Go on to the next right. person. Don't date her anymore. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so I'd like to ask you then, what suggestion are you giving to the women? Are you suggesting that all women are sluts? Sluts? Where did you get that from? I said, well, no, I, I, I tell men not to get married because if the marriage doesn't work out, which it doesn't in one out of every two cases, uh, that uh, the men are going to end up paying. There's no benefit to men to get married. Well, no, that's not... I, I understand that part. I'm talking about just dating. If I don't want to give it up after three dates, if I don't oh. consider myself a slut, are you suggesting that I should never date then? I mean... No, if, you, if, you should do whatever you... But, darling, you know, you're assuming 100% of all the men out there listen to the Tom Lyka show, and God, I wish that were true. But, you know, there's guys listening to other... You know, there's guys listening to music. There's guys listening to their iPod right now. There's guys uh, listening to the snore that uh, that all white station down the dial. Okay, so I understand now. So you're saying a certain kind of guy, the guys that listen to your show, maybe they're young, maybe they want to sow their wild oats. No, I don't think any. I don't think any guy should go on more than three dates with someone without getting laid. Because I think what that is saying is that there is no chemistry. No, because what if the woman doesn't want to be a slut and doesn't want to sleep with a guy every, every two days? 
What if I just want to date? Well, you know. But by the way, you could just go out with a guy two times, and if you're not attracted to him, move on to the next guy. Well, what if I am attracted to him, but I don't want to sleep with him after two days? Well, because you've done it with other people. I've done what with other? You've people? had you've had sex with at least one guy in less than three dates. Maybe twenty years ago. But well, not fine. Recently. Well, guess what? That guy got into your panties uh, when he wanted to. Uh, why should Why should I take a back seat to anybody? Okay, but that's an isolated condition. The point doesn't is, doesn't matter. Right it's isolated because right that guy was really hot, and he's somebody you you said, "Damn the torpedoes!" I don't care if he thinks I'm a slut or not. I'm going right in. Mm -hmm. And and you see, just about every woman I've ever known has at least one guy like that in their past. The really hot guy, there were no rules for him. I'm not taking a back seat to anyone. No ski instructors, tennis instructors, Hall of Fame baseball players, rock stars. I'm not taking a back seat to anybody. I don't like the idea that the, the, the guy who taught you how to scuba dive at Club Med, he got into the sack with you right away or whoever, and then you meet him. Well, I don't know if I'm going to give it up in the first 27 dates because you might think I'm that kind of girl. You were that kind of girl. You were that kind of girl when somebody was that hot you had to get into the sack with him. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's leave me out then. How about my You niece? and everybody my, else. My niece is 19 and she hasn't had sex yet and she doesn't plan to until she gets married. So by your Why would I... I tell so guys, do minute, not... You're die. saying that she should never go... Then she said that her dating life's going to be nothing because you're... Well, your, a lot of virgins are having a hard time. A lot of virgins are having a hard time. By the way, I've told guys on this show not even to have sex with virgins, much less date them. Well, but that's what I'm saying. So you're saying then that a girl who is like my niece, who went to Catholic school, who doesn't want to have sex until she gets married, you're saying her dating life should be zero. She should, I'm not saying no what it should, should be. Out. Anybody who wants to go out with her and not have sex should go right ahead. But now You're telling all guys that they shouldn't go out with her. They, number one, they shouldn't go out with a virgin. Number two, they shouldn't go out with someone who doesn't put out the first three dates. Okay, well, then we're penalizing girls that aren't sluts, is what you're saying. Because we, we want to meet sluts. That's what we want. And then what happens to girls like my niece? What is your suggestion? Well, you, she'll have to date somebody who listens to music on their iPod. You know, sits and listens to, uh, you know, uh, Pope John Paul CDs or whatever they listen to. Or uh, CDs of Cardinal Roger Mahoney explaining why he allowed priests to diddle young boys and then transfer them to other parishes. Or whatever Catholics listen to, that's what you should have for, uh, maybe she should date guys who listen to stuff like that. Guys who listen to this show are looking to get laid. We're not looking to uh, take uh, your Cinderella to uh, the, 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 the fairy princess ball. Okay, well, that's, I understand now. I mean, you're, you're saying that you have a certain type of listenership. It's not, no, no, no. The kind of listenership I have is the average guy. The average guy. So yeah, this is not a niche, dear. This is one of the highest rated radio programs for men. But that's I know that. That's why I said. That's why I said. But by your you're you're telling young men, men a I, huge population of young men I, here in Los Angeles, yes. they shouldn't go out with someone like my niece. Right. Who's a beautiful, talented. What good does that do us if she doesn't uh, let us see her naked? Because she has. Oh, so you're saying that's all a woman has to offer a man is sex. That's why men go out on dates is to get laid. So there's nothing going on on dates to have companionship. Man, man, we have companionship. You know what? I got pals. I got friends. Art came over to my house last night. You know, Art is uh, environmentally responsible. Our engineer, he went green last night. He came over to my house and went to the Laker game. And you've never had a friend who's a girl you'd like who likes who's my my niece actually will love sports so you wouldn't go to a Laker game with a girl that no why buy her a ticket and then not not get anything in return no why would I do that maybe you like her personality and she's fun no no no, no like by the way I have tickets to two of the NBA Finals games next week and I can tell you right now whoever goes with me will not be a virgin who doesn't put out I can tell you right now. So who's I have person? I have tickets, mm -hmm. good tickets, to watch the Lakers and the Celtics twice next week. But you're saying no woman's good enough to be your friend. That's what you're saying. I, no, the point is, I, I have friends. I don't need more of them. Well, why wouldn't any of those friends be a woman? Why couldn't a one be a woman? Because if, 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 if you saw when Harry met Sally, I think it explains it pretty clearly. 
You know, a man can't be friends with a woman because sex always gets in the way. If there's somebody attractive, we want to nail them. By the way, most women, maybe not your niece, but most women, when they have male friends, that's a list of all the guys they're not attracted to. Well, women don't have male friends they're attracted to. Well, of course. I mean, she's not having sex. And she's I, not I said maybe not your niece, dear. No, she's... A, no, the she show's not about your niece. Several, it's about people in every, general. She is attracted to several guys, and she goes out with them, and they don't have sex. Well, they go to movies so, and see, she's having a great bowling. time. Why, I and should they, help her get even more victims into her web? No. Why is that... Why would you say it that way. Why? Because guys go on dates to get laid. That's why we go on dates. Guys don't they like... Let me review with you. Let me review with you. I, the, again, I, I didn't say every guy knows what he's doing or is intelligent. They're not. Maybe, they, saying, maybe, maybe they're altar boys having sex with their priests. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe they're gay. No, no, they're not gay. Well, <laughs> darling, we've seen a lot of I've things going them. on in the Catholic Church. Anything's possible. Well, not all Catholics... That, that's a very small I never said all percentage. Catholics, dear. My mother a very, was a Catholic. very small percentage of Catholics. Well, I, I don't care how small it was. The fact that it was tolerated and the fact that Catholics continue to put money in the collection plate even after that scandal came out that tells, me the, uh, tells me a lot about the attitude of Catholics. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't want to get onto that subject. We already that did. Subject. Well, for, but the bottom topic. line here is why would any man want to go out with a woman who's not going to put out? Now, the so fact that if she already knows people, guys. then what are you she's worried about? If she's go got three or four guys, how many more does she need? She doesn't. I'm just wondering why you give that type of advice. I mean, she because. Has tonight, friend. What's that? They, go, they, they bowl and they go to movies and they go to the beach and they have a lot of fun. So why are you giving that advice to guys not to go? That's what I'm calling about. Why are you saying that? Because the guys might have a lot of fun with the girl no. going past, going no. past. Sex no. And just getting no. to know someone having a good no. time with them. No. No. Why? Because guys don't think that way, except the few pussy whipped or probably gay people who are dating your niece. They're not pussy whipped. They're really nice guys. One's going to go into the Navy. The other guy's going to go. He's a pre med. He's going to go to U.S. Blah, next year. blue. By the way, those guys are getting laid somewhere. They do, actually. Well, then, I, I, why they waste their time with your niece, I don't know, but I guarantee you they're not listeners to this show. You know why they waste time with my niece? Because my niece is the one that they're going to marry. They're not going to marry the slut, and all the girls... Well, and by the way, my listeners aren't going to marry anybody. They're not going to marry the oh. slut, they're not going to marry the good girl, they're not going to marry anybody. Well, they they are. Well, <laughs> they no, are get no. Are you telling me that everyone that listens to you is never going to No, get I never married? said everyone. Generally speaking, our listeners are generally not going to get married. And do you really believe that? Yes, I do. So of all your listeners, what percentage... I don't know. I, 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 I haven't taken... I haven't canvassed... I have not canvassed the metropolitan area. Well, I don't sure know. At least 75% of them are going to get well, married. Well, really? Where did you get that number from, uh, darling? You have uh, empirical evidence? I'd like to see it. It, I could. I'm sure it's out there. Yeah, I'm sure it's out there, right? Well, you find it. You let me know. Meantime, guys go on dates to get laid. Dating equals porking. That's what it is. Huh? We do not go on dates so we can spend money on your niece and treat her like a princess. That is not what we're on dates for. Well, first of all, she, they don't. Why shouldn't she be treated like a princess? Why shouldn't any? Because girl no one, like no one should be treated like a princess. Women demanded equality in the seventies, and I believe in giving it to them. I'm America's original she feminist. Treats, she treats her guy friends as princess. There's nothing wrong with really. That. So she take them to dinner and pay for everything. They pay. They go Dutch. They pay for themselves. Yeah, but mostly pay they pay. Themselves. Mostly they pay. No, they don't ever. The guys never pay. No, she doesn't want to do that because she doesn't want to set up the wrong oh, message. Well, there you go. That's good. That's good. But still, uh, I've got plenty of other people I can go to dinner with who are pals. Uh, they're good friends of mine. They know about the Lakers. They know about uh, the Dodgers. They know about NASCAR. I can go out and talk sports with my friends, talk about politics, have a good time. No uh, sexual tension, no pressure because I have no interest in that. Well, sometimes that sexual tension is fun, don't you No, think? no, I don't. You don't think it's it's fun only over fun if there's a payoff. That's why I don't like strip clubs. Well, maybe there'd be a payoff in six months or a year from now. 
You just said you just said she's a virgin. She's saving it for marriage. Well, yes, she's eighteen. But I'm saying, if you went out with some women, who di- women who didn't give it up right away, and maybe there was some sexual tension, and you got to know them better, I, I, maybe maybe if you married that kind of, I woman, have no interest be in being married. None. There is no benefit to me to get married. Well, if all the women you did marry gave it up in two dates, maybe that's why you're not married. I don't anymore. want to be married. You don't understand. I don't want to be married. But you were married. I think I was, time. and by the way, I was with people I knew for some time, and it still didn't work out. That had nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. And did you have sex with all of them within, oh, let's say, a few dates? Yes. But by the way, most women do that nowadays, dear. Yes, but you've re- you ever you since the sixties, most women have been doing that. that. What statistics? Why you have? Oh my gosh, they're all over the place. Which which book. statistics specifically? Uh, I, there are reports. There are uh, which reports are these? Who substantiated them? Where are they? All over the place. From all Harvard, over Michael, the place. Of yes. all over the place. Yeah, Harvard, it's Yale, it's women, Columbia. The yeah, so they're all yeah. on. The, yeah. The, the, all the, yeah. Well, where can I find these? Tell me specifically what website to go to. Do I'll send you it. Do a Google search. No, no, no. The, you do a Google search. The You're the one quoting the statistics. The you are. You are pulling this stuff out of your ass. You do not have any no, statistics. I've had enough, you old bitch. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800. Tom. It's... You sound like a show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Last Friday, 2008. Headlights on, everybody. Headlights on. It's wide open telephones here on the Tom Likas show. It's Robin on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing today? Doing okay. So I got a question for you. I'm a long-time listener, first-time caller. Yeah. And a, a few callers back uh, about Howard Stern, a gentleman mentioned, or actually you mentioned to him, that you don't believe in any marriage of any sort. Um, I don't believe I there's, there's any benefit to men to get married. There is no benefit to men to get married, and therefore I think men are foolish in this country until the laws change to consider getting married. Gotcha. So you believe there's a lot to do with the laws then? It, it's everything to do with how guys get screwed in divorce. Well, how, how do you expect if you don't believe in any kind of marriage for America to continue with kids? For well, I, I don't I mean, know if do you... you've noticed, uh, but uh, a very large percentage of the children born are born to unwed mothers anyway. Well, that's kind of contradicting your statement. I mean, you're, you're no, it's not. kids, young men, to have a lot of sex with a lot of women. I do, but I don't. Ex- I encourage them to do it with condoms. Which leads I encourage them to pay for abortions if women ever get gotcha. accidentally pregnant. Uh, so, uh, no, I am not encouraging guys to have children. I'm encouraging them to have fun. Have fun, which includes a lot of sex with a lot of different sex, women. Sex, yes. And like, you know like that I've done. don't necessarily work, and, and young kids aren't smart enough. Well, guess enough guess what? I'm, I'm 51 years old, and I don't have any kids. And I've been banging away since I was uh, 13. And, and, and you're a lucky few, actually, that probably got away without it. No, actually, four different women got pregnant, and they had abortions, which I paid for, and I'm proud to say so. Wow. That's a... Uh... That says a lot, Tom. I mean, I, I highly respect a lot of things you say, but, I mean, you tell kids to go out and do this kind of stuff. When, no, when no. I, I, the first of all, it's not that I'm telling them. Accident. I'm not telling them to do anything they're not already doing or that they don't already believe in doing. Well, you need to tell them stop, support abstinence until you do no, get No, I don't support I don't support abstinence. This is not a religious talk show. This is not a Christian radio station. I do not support abstinence. And it's not my job to tell people to be abstinent. The guys are going to get laid. So when is it okay to get married, in your opinion? For a guy, never. So that goes back to my original question. How do you, how do you expect America to continue having kids and families? And- America is continuing right now. You know, guys are getting married at the latest age ever. Do you know that for the first... They, they started taking the census in 1790, almost back to 1776 when the country was founded. Do you know that uh, in the last census, 2000, this is the first time that single uh, uh, single people are heads of household. It's a majority, first time ever. Do you know it's also the first time That's in American that. history that the majority of women are unmarried? So why not do something to change that, Tom? With your power, it's not my job. Of course, first of all, as I've said many times, 
I'm not as naive. Now, you're not in the broadcasting business, so uh, you wouldn't know any better. But there's a lot of morons on the radio who think it's their job to use a radio show to try to change things. Radio show's not here to change things. They're here for entertainment. entertainment. That's what we're here for. We're not here to change laws or tell people what to do. I I tell people, in fact, I don't even tell guys to go out and get laid. I tell them not to forget why they go on dates. See, a lot of guys out there, maybe not your listeners, uh, but a lot of guys out there go out on dates to find the right one. Well, to actually find true th- love. Those guys are not regular listeners to this show. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to argue with you there. I mean, they're probably listening to Christian radio, like you. Well, I'm actually, I don't listen to Christian radio. I'm not religious at all. Um, well, but, but, but most people who start talking about abstinence are religious. Well, I just think it's either abstinence or you wait for marriage, one of the two. And, well, and that sounds that sounds background. that sounds like religion to me. I think it just sounds like someone who's someone intelligent. No, no, I think you're hiding. You know protect I think you're hiding your religious feelings here. <laughs> to be, I'll be all honest with you, I, I've never stepped foot in a church. I actually was forced to go to church when I was about six or seven years old on a camp out. And from that point forward, I never stepped foot back into it. Uh, my family, half my family comes from India. I have a lot of spiritual beliefs. I believe in a higher power, but I don't believe in God. So are you waiting for your parents to tell you who you're going to be able to marry? Oh, absolutely not. No. I told my parents. Mm. So you're a virgin? No. Why not? Why not? Yes. So you like giving advice to other people what to do, but you don't follow your own advice. No, I just, I, I actually, uh, well, I don't really feel, feel like getting into all my personal stuff with you. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not that, that stupid to argue with Tom. However, I was just, I was just curious. I mean, you, you always support kids going out and getting the Again, getting why, the why, why are you possible. recommending abstinence and not abstinent yourself? Not necessarily abstinence, but I mean. You, you just said you recommended abstinence. A- you said there were two choices, abstinence or getting married. That's what you said. I'm quoting you. Yeah. So why aren't you abstinent? Well, then I, I, the answer then I, is I, because you're just another hypocrite with a telephone. No, I just had a question for you about how you how you think again. No, 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 no. I'm not letting you. I'm not letting you sashay off like that, son. I want you to tell me why you're calling in anonymously and recommending abstinence to people while I'm you rec- while you yourself are not abstinent. I'm asking you why you don't support it. No, no. You said there are only. Do you? Do I have to play the tape back, son, or are you going to uh, finally admit? That you said this within the last two minutes. Well, I misspoke then. You did you say on this program that you have only two choices: abstinence or getting married, and that that's what I should be telling people. Yeah, well, I don't go out with a bunch. Of did you women say that? Late. Yes or no? I, I've been with one woman. That's not abstinence. Yeah. That is not abstinence. Well, if you're engaged and you're planning on that, is not abstinence. Like- Okay, well, you got me there, Tom. You damn straight I did. Tom, Tom Likas. Like 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. From Hollywood. I'm Tom Likas on the first Flash Friday of 2008. Thank you for tuning in. Well, we're going to play a little Name That Tune now with the people on hold. I'm going to play a song that is very, very popular. For reasons uh, that we Americans can't fathom. It's very, very popular in another country. And I'm wondering uh, if anybody... I'm going to play this song. Uh, it's very brief. And I'm going to see how many... Just how many Americans know what this song is. <laughs> because I just want you to know that the, the there are people who are very, very, very passionate about the song you're about to hear. They are apoplectic right now. (laughs) Now, you would think we're talking about, you know, the Star Spangled Banner, or we're talking about, you know, uh, uh, Amazing Grace, or we're talking about, uh, no, this, I'm going to play a few bars of this song, and then we're going to go to the phones. Whoever's on hold, I'm going to ask you if you know what this song is. Because amazingly enough, you'd be surprised where this song is popular and what it is. Here it is. Very, 
very emotional about this song. Josh, do you know what that song is? Uh, Tom, I have no clue. No clue what it is. All right. Uh, crank that up there, uh, Art. Uh, and crank up the callers, too. Brian. Hello. Have you heard this song before? No, sir, I have not. You have no idea what it is? I have never heard it. Okay. We get to Cody. Cody, have you ever heard this song before? I uh, never. Never. You have no idea what it is? No, oh, sir. It's so funny how many people have never heard of this song. Greg, you know what this song is? Uh, is that Tina Turner's Private Dancer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Uh, let's go to Lauren here. Lauren, uh, have you ever heard this song before? No idea, Tom. No idea what it is. Okay. Are you aware that there's a whole country flipping out because this song is about to be taken away from them? I don't even know what the song is. Oh, no. I'm... Yeah. Well, now that you're listening to it, could you imagine being emotional about this song and saying to yourself, oh, my God, you can't take that song away from us? That sounds like some kind of... I, is that even is it even an American song? Well, I just said it's in another country. I don't know. Right. We get Brian on here. Brian, do you have any idea what that song is? Nope, I do not. Never heard it. Is it a theme to a TV show? To what? A TV show? I can't hear you. Is it a theme to a TV show? A TV show. Actually, yeah. it is a theme to a TV show. Yeah. Yeah, you've come closer than anybody. Now, do you know that in Canada, everybody in Canada knows this song? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what TV show. You know what TV show? No, I'm sorry. Uh, well, we got somebody here who knows what TV show it is. It, it took a lot of tries here, though. And Philip, yeah, you must be from Canada. No, my wife's from Canada. I lived there for about 18 months, so... That's the uh, Hockey Night in Canada theme, Tom. That's the theme to Hockey Night in Canada. So, would it be safe to say everybody in Canada walks around humming this song all the time? Yeah, it's so everybody in Canada knows that song, for sure. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little story about this song. <laughs> Here it is. This is uh, a major controversy right now in Canada. And I'm making this up. I mean, it's a, how long is that song? 40 seconds? 40 seconds. Listen to this. Dateline Toronto. Hockey fans called a major penalty against the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation as the national broadcasters seem prepared to do away with the theme to Hockey Night in Canada. <laughs> a beloved 40-year-old musical institution is familiar to Canadians as the country's national anthem. Now, may I point out that the theme to Monday Night Football, which would be the closest American equivalent to Hockey Night in Canada has changed many times over the years and nobody gave a rat's ass. Hell, hockey... Uh, uh, football, <laughs> Monday Night Football is not even on network TV anymore. It's on cable and nobody cared. But he said a word. Mary Quigley of Cape Breton, Nova Scotia said, CBC won't get away with that. <laughs> <laughs> the Canadian people won't let them get away with that. Says here, websites carrying news of the possible separation of the hockey anthem from Hockey Night in Canada quickly got emails from people passionate about the theme. I wonder how many Canadians in Los Angeles or Dallas or wherever, I wonder how many Canadians in this country have any idea about this controversy. Or if they're at all surprised by this. Online petitions have been launched. Some fans of the song have shared anecdotes. Anecdotes about that 40 second song. The anecdotes ran longer than the song. Yes. Here's one. This is... Uh, this is quoted from a website. Somebody wrote this in. In 1990, the guy said... My son stood up at a crowded restaurant in Tokyo, Japan, and sang the Hockey Night in Canada <laughs> theme song. <laughs> yes. 
uh, the person on the CBC website who wrote into the blog said before he had completed four bars in Tokyo singing this theme, he was joined by various other Canadians he did not know. So you imagine they're in Japan at a restaurant. One guy starts singing this song. Ba, 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 ba. It doesn't have lyrics or anything. And other Canadians started joining in. That's, that's how emotional people are about that song. Americans aren't even that emotional about hockey, much less the theme song to any television show. <laughs> it says here that uh, reports that the theme might be benched next year came when the agency that represents the song's composer. <laughs> there's a composer to that. <laughs> Let's see. What are we going to say about hockey? <laughs> yes it says here that um, reports that the theme might be benched next year came when the agency that represents the song's composer said that the CBC will no longer use the familiar hockey anthem the head of CBC Sports though says that the song hasn't been shelved yet CBC Sports Executive Director Scott Moore in an interview said our negotiations continue and if we can do a deal for the theme that is reasonable for both sides, we'll do it. It's a great theme. If we can't, then we have an alternate direction that we're excited about. And that I think will create controversy and create excitement amongst Canadians. But certainly, our first choice would be to keep the theme as it is. The license agreement CBC had with composer Dolores Clayman ended with this year's Stanley Cup playoffs, which wrapped up Wednesday night. Don, I'm sorry, John Ciccone, whose company, Copyright Music and Visuals, controls use of the song, said he was given a deadline of noon Wednesday to reach a new agreement. Ciccone said the CBC sent him an email later in the afternoon telling him they would not renew the contract. He said, we looked at it every different way we could. Whatever it takes, let's try to come up with something. Moore said that he was scheduled to speak with Ciccone later on Thursday. It didn't take long for a public outcry. What are you pointing to me here, Gary? Breaking news, Tim. Breaking news? Just Wait, uh, breaking away. news. Here's breaking news. Oh, I didn't realize we had breaking news. Okay. The deal. Oh, my God. This just in. Now the deal to keep the Hockey Night in Canada theme has fallen through. That's right. Negotiations have collapsed. According to CBC News. Oh yes. And by the way, to go back to the previous story, I think the, the, now the negotiations are done. This was all over cost. Do you know how much they pay? Do you know how much the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation pays to run that in every broadcast? How many millions of dollars does Hockey Night in Canada generate? It's one of the highest rated television shows in Canada. They've been paying, get this, $500 a week. The Tom Likas Show.